Hi, everyone. Today we have Wendy Schenken Cohen, who is the president and CEO of Dr. Harvey's, and Amy Zalneritis, who is the chief brand officer and co founder of We Feed Raw. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Amy. You did. You did. Um, <laughs> uh, first, I would like to introduce Wendy. Uh, Wendy, in 1998, Wendy and Harvey Cohen founded Dr. Harvey's. Um, Dr. Harvey's was a pioneer company in the natural pet food space. And the mission of the company has always been to provide animals with the highest quality food, supplements, and treats. Wendy is an advocate for animal welfare and animal rights. She is also an advocate for holistic health and well being for humans and animals. She is the co author of Feeling Light, the Holistic Solution to Permanent Weight Loss and Wellness, Avon Books, 1996 and co-founder of the Feeling Light Program, a holistic approach to health for humans. Wendy also wrote the foreword to and collaborated on the Encyclopedia of Vitamins, Minerals, and Supplements by Tova Novara. Wendy graduated with a BA from the University of Michigan and holds a master's degree from the New York University. Today, Wendy oversees all aspects of Dr. Harvey's operations in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, Next, I'd like to introduce Amy. Amy Zalneritis is the co-founder and chief brand officer of We Feed Raw, a premium raw dog food company that delivers complete and balanced meals to dogs all over the country. With an extensive background in marketing, Amy has leveraged her skills in writing and creative direction to create an unforgettable brand that sets the gold standard in the raw dog food market. We Feed Raw was originally founded by Amy's sister, Alyssa, a huge dog lover and advocate for all animals. After Alyssa's heartbreaking passing in 2014, Amy made it her mission to keep her sister's dream and legacy alive. Today, under Amy's vision, We Feed Raw is is not only the fastest growing um, direct-to-consumer raw food company out there, it is considered the premier raw dog food delivery service. It's been rated best in class by Forbes, People Magazine, Popular Science, The Skim, and other top-tier publications. Amy has worked tirelessly to maintain the brand's integrity and to ensure that there is a cohesive brand message across all media channels. She remains endlessly inspired by her sister's mission to provide dogs with biologically appropriate nutritious food and is committed to delivering health and happiness to pets across the country. Um, Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, very so, interesting. So, wonderful. Um, so, Amy, we're going to start asking you a few questions, and then we'll we'll go over to Wendy. Um, how and why was We Feed Raw founded? Um, sure, nice to be here. Um, so, as you touched on in the, the little bio, um, We Feed Raw was originally founded by my sister Alyssa. Um, Alyssa was a dog lover. Um, she was a big rescuer of dogs. She had 10 rescues at one time. <laughs> um, so she just, from childhood, had always been a big animal lover. Um, my whole family is. We were raised by parents who are big rescuers of animals. So it was passed on to us. Um, and in caring for her rescues, uh, my sister discovered raw feeding. And it was really just not... Um, you know, something she was looking at as a business opportunity, but rather just, you know, a concerned pet parent. And she discovered raw feeding, started, you know, doing the research and um, making her own dogs raw meals. And then she started making raw meals for her friends' dogs, friends of friends' dogs, and the business grew from there. So, you know, instead of, you know, seeing a hole in the market and trying to capitalize on it, she really just was trying to do the best thing for her own dogs. And out of that, a business opportunity presented itself. Um, and so she did this with her fiance, Rich, um, out of Austin, Texas for four to five years. They were, you know, delivering it door to door, making it themselves, um, just a very small, steadily growing business. Um, but tragically in 2013, she was diagnosed with late stage terminal cancer and at the end of 2014 passed away. So my family and I came together, uh, to keep her vision and legacy alive. The business was still very much in like a growth phase and, you know, had a lot of customers and we, you know, had two choices really. It was either, you know, if it was one of those things that we didn't have a lot of time to pause and consider 
what we were going to do. It was like, if we're going to do this, we have to like do this tomorrow. Um, the people still needed their food and people um, were relying on us. So that's what we did. Um, and, you know, while it was an incredibly hard time for all of us and we were all grieving, um, we also found, I think, some catharsis in, in doing this. And it was such an extension of her that it, it felt like um, keeping a piece of her alive too. So um, that's what we did. And um, I ended up, I was working in marketing at a fashion company in New York City. So I, and I had done that for years. I was a writer and, um, you know, had always worked in some capacity in marketing. So I used my skills to sort of develop the brand and um, we hired a creative agency. We, um, you know, I helped to grow the customer base. I secured outside funding. I mean, I really <laughs> did everything to ensure that this company would be a success. Um, and since then we've, we've grown a lot. We've, um, you know, other team members have joined, um, you know, some really great, talented people. Um, and right now we're, we're in a really high growth phase We're we're doing really well. Um, it's really exciting to see, you know, something that my sister started, um, be, you know, a brand that people recognize and trust and, um, yeah, we're really proud of, of where it is today. And I, I, it really warms my heart to um think about where we were <laughs> how hard it was and like you know the success that we were having now is it's just so exciting so that's how it all began <laughs> watching over you yeah. know, this beautiful business and um and it's kind of guiding the way so that's yes that's so sweet. yeah i do feel her all the time i talk to her <laughs> Uh, we were very close. My whole family was very close. We're a small family. So, um, you know, we were only two years apart. So very close siblings. And um, I, you know, hear her voice. And she was uh, just a visionary in a lot of ways. Like she always thought outside of the box and um, was unapologetic in her love for animals. And, you know, she was, you know, Wendy, I'm sure you can relate to this. It's like approaching dog food <laughs> differently than the majority of people. It was really like the people on the margins of society, like thinking about it differently. And you were kind of a weirdo if you fed dogs healthy food like this. So um, I appreciate her courage in that, you know, and, and even being the one to to think about this and, and be courageous enough to make it into a business. So it's a great story. Really very, very touching. It's really incredible what you've done. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So, Amy, tell us, what are the benefits of feeding a raw diet that includes muscle meat, organs, and bones? Oh, geez. Okay. So, I mean, feeding raw to pets is as old as the bond between mankind and dogs. Dogs have been thriving on a raw meat-based diet for their entire existence for millennia, long before kibble was ever invented, which was about 100 years ago, less than 100 years ago. Um, so this is really, you know, well, we've domesticated dogs, uh, for their, you know, we've, we've bred them for their looks, their behavior, their temperament. We haven't changed their digestive systems. Their digestive systems are almost identical to their ancestors. So we believe that feeding a diet that closely mimics what dogs ate in the wild, their ancestral diet gives dogs the best chance at a happy, healthy, disease-free life. Um, you know, Wendy, I'm sure you, you know all about this, but the gut microbiome and the immune, immune system are closely linked. Um, and dogs fed a very high carb, highly processed diet predisposes them to unhealthy gut bacteria. Um, you know, on the other hand, feeding an all natural raw diet promotes healthy gut bacteria. So, you know, we think that, you know, feeding dogs <laughs> with their design to process, with their design to digest, um, is again, just gives them the best chance at a healthy, happy existence. And so that's what our diet is based on the ancestral diet. Um, roughly 80% muscle meat with connective tissue and fat, 10% organ meat with, uh, which is all secreting organ and around 10% finely ground raw meaty bones. So, um, yeah, that's really kind of like we, we, pre-portion everything and customize it based on uh, the dog's weight, ideal adult weight, activity level, um, 
any allergies it has, and then we ship it directly to your doorstep. And all that our customers have to do is thaw and feed. So the, the mission is really to make raw feeding as simple and uncomplicated as possible because, you know, well, it's great if you're a DIY raw feeder, um, I think it can be hard to do it your, yourself. Um, also, we are very much, while well, we provide, um, you know, complete and balanced meals, um, we're very much uh, okay with and supportive of and even promote the idea of adding toppers to our food. So that's why, you know, a company like Dr. Harvey's is really great and it's such a great synergy for what we do because um, they're, they're supplement our food wonderfully. And we have tons of customers who use your products and, you know, love to add things. I think we always, we call them bowl brags internally, which is like, you don't ever see this happening with kibble bowls, but people <laughs> make these beautiful bowls that are like, you would see them in like a fine dining restaurant. <laughs> and I think it's just because when you start to feed really healthy, fresh food, I mean, our food looks like it's straight from the butcher. It's like, you know, red meat. People want to, they're like, oh, maybe I should be adding this, you know, these blueberries or, you know, uh, raspberries or, you know, one of your amazing products to the bowls and then they want to take pictures of them and post them on social and it become it's become this thing i mean some of our videos have gone viral with like millions of views of just you know pet parents making these awesome bowls for their dogs um so yeah we're blown away every day by the creativity that we see <laughs> people are just amazing that they that they a have the time <laughs> and be the creativity to, to do it. The bowls are so incredible. And it, it's true that uh, there's a synergy between what you do and what we do. And lots and lots of our customers have been using, we feed raw with Dr. Harvey's and we love that. We love that. That's why talking with you is so great. And I've been using your products too lately. Um, Alexis from your team sent me some stuff to try my mom, who's actually, the, we call her like the OG <laughs> dog lover, but she's always been really into nutrition and dog nutrition and has been using your products for years too. Um, so we're all like big fans over here. Um, and I, I just love that you guys have such a high quality product. I love your story. I love how this started again, like similar to us, like just out of a love for animals and wanting to do right by them. And, um, kind of being like a little bit of the weirdo outside of the mainstream and, and, and having the courage to continue on that path, even when everyone's telling you like, well, they don't really need that. Or, you know, dogs just, just feed them dog food. <laughs> um, so you can imagine that Dr. Harvey started talking about this in, uh, I think we actually, you said 1998 was really 19, 1983 when we actually started. And wow. You talked about how people thought you were crazy. You can imagine in 1983 when health and wellness wasn't even a thing, even for humans. Yeah. And when we talked about preparing food for dogs, I mean, they absolutely thought he was insane. Yeah. And uh, we spent a lot of time, you know, letting people know that this is not a crazy thing. This is absolutely the way to keep your dogs healthy. Yeah, it's so true. And I think, you know, today, even we still get those comments, you know, we still, it's becoming more mainstream but you know i was talking recently um to other people in the industry and well raw feeding is more accepted now and more people understand what it is we, we call the this category the raw curious <laughs> crowd you know they, they're they get it like it, it makes intuitive sense why you would feed a dog this way but there's still a lot of questions and fear and uncertainty um you know so well it's still it's it's becoming more mainstream it's still um not like kibble, right? It's still a sliver of the market. Um, it, kibble dominates the pet food market and most vets are, you know, promoting kibble too. And so it's, it's really kind of, we're still, um, I would say a, a very small percentage, um, but it's growing and it's, it's the fastest growing segment of the pet food market. Um, so it's, it's fun to be a part of it. Um, there's still a lot of education. I'm sure you guys feel this too, just educating people on why this is beneficial, why um, kibble might not be the best thing for your dogs. We also try to be very careful about not being too anti-kibble. We just say we're anti-only kibble. So, you know, while we of course think a fully raw diet is best, we understand it's not feasible for everyone all the time. So feeding raw as a base or a mixer or a topper is something that we really promote too. Um, just adding, getting some fresh ingredients in there um, can make a huge difference. 
So um, we're trying to be a little bit less severe in our approach these days. Um, I think in the beginning, when my sister started it, it was just a much more uh, severe group of people because you kind of had to be. <laughs> you know? It was like, it's all raw or nothing. And, you know, it's this and like that. And, and now I think it's a little, it's softened a little bit. And um, we try to have a much more egalitarian approach to raw feeding. We like to say there's good, better, and best. Right. And you exactly. can get people in at good. Sometimes they'll then go to better and eventually they may go to best, but you have to meet people where they are. And it really depends. I mean, I would say Meta has a, the best uh, knowledge of this, but when people come to us, and I'm sure it happens with you as well, uh, they're really looking for a solution because their dog is not doing well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at that point, Dr. Harvey used to say, save me, save me, save me when you're sick. And then, you know, people will try something new when they've been to the vet and the vet says, there's nothing more I can do for your dog. Yes. Yeah. So that's sometimes how you get people to tip their, put their, yeah. their toe in the water, right? Yeah. They're uh, desperate. Yeah. It's but you're a hundred percent right. If they just do a few things better, if they just use fresh food sometimes or raw meal every other day, or even once a week, that's going to improve their health. And, yeah. uh, it's our job to educate the people. We've always seen ourselves as a company that educates. That's always been part of our mission. And you're right. You're up against this huge uh, marketing, marketing machine. And you're also up against the veterinary community, which largely still promotes kibble as the only way to feed your dog. Yes, it's true. I think that uh, one of the, the PhD nutritionists that we work with a lot um, mm-hmm has this quote that's, you know, says that clinicians who push raw food as dangerous and kibble as the only safe option are outdated and ill-informed and working with incomplete information. And I don't think it's fair to, you know, be a vet and be so vehemently anti-raw. It's like, it's one thing if you might not know enough about it and you say that, you know, I've, I've seen the, the tide changing a little bit where vets will sometimes say, listen, I just don't know enough about it, but if you right. choose to do it, choose, you know, a company that's complete and balanced or blah, blah, blah. But I do take issue with the anti, vehemently anti-raw because you're just not giving pet parents the full story and a fair um, chance at giving their dogs the best life. So we have seen it start to change. And even just in my years of doing this, which hasn't been super long, um, I've seen it start to shift. I've noticed a shift. We have more conventional vets reaching out to us that, you know, our clients even that um, promote our food, that feed our food that was not happening even just like five or six years ago. So it's nice to see that. Um, I think we have a long way to go, but there's definitely, I think that the consumers are driving the trend, right? So the more people that come in with healthy, happy dogs and their blood work is great. Um, hopefully the more vets will become open-minded to it, but. Yeah. Unfortunately it's Hills that supports the veterinary schools. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting their information from, from them. They're also the ones that can afford to do all of the trials and the testing. And so that's what the vets are seeing, but it is changing. And I can tell you after doing this for, over 35 years now, the, the change is remarkable. Uh, I love to tell the story that I attended the first holistic veterinary conference in 1986 with my son, who now runs the company, who uh, was, was nursing at the time, so I couldn't leave him. And it was in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, in the basement of a motel. Wow. And there were, <laughs> there were 19 <laughs> vets there. Yeah. So we still uh, attend that conference every year, and now there are over 2,000 vets that belong to the AHVMA. And so we have seen that that change, and those vets are so key to helping us with the educational part of it. It's so true, and it's so exciting to talk to someone like you who's actually just been in the mix for so long and actually seen the change. Like I can, you know, read the books and, you know, see what I've seen in this small sliver of time, but to actually talk to someone like you, who's, who's been there from the beginning and seen the change and been a part, been a true part of, of this awareness is really awesome because there's not a lot of people like you. (laughs) I'm very old. So (laughs) it's been a long time. (laughs) 
Well, this, well, I think this leads into a great question then. So, you know, with all of the, the vets telling you one thing and Google telling you another, what, what are some tips that you have for pet parents that haven't fed raw before? Oh, I mean, we, so we deal with this a lot because, and as we're growing too, like now we're in this really um, high growth phase, we have a lot more people um, contacting us that are raw curious, you know, they're, they're like, okay, I've heard this is right. It sounds like it's right. I've seen other people doing it, but I'm still scared. My vet tells me not to do it. Is my dog going to get sick from back here? Like all of them. So um, the first thing we try to just, I mean, I would tell anyone who's interested um, to get as much information as they can and try to find, if they can, try to find a vet who's not anti-raw. So <laughs> they don't necessarily have to be educated in raw because that's just few and far between. Um, any vet that's doing that is getting, ex you know, educating themselves after vet school. Um, but there's great resources out there. There's, I mean, follow the raw companies, follow a doc the Dr. Harvey's out there. Um, there's great books. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib just wrote The Forever Dog. Um, there's a documentary called Pet Fooled. That's what I always say a must watch. There's good information out there. I try to just tell people because what that does is it takes the uncertainty away. It takes a level of the uncertainty away. It puts you in a place of confidence. Um, one of the things that we find the hardest part about transitioning dogs from a kibble diet to a raw diet is the pet parents uncertainty. Um, they start from a place of fear um, and uncertainty. And then during the transition, it's not always the smoothest transition, right? You have a dog that's going from eating a highly processed junk food diet to, <laughs> you know, a healthy whole foods diet. As humans, if we did the same thing, we would have probably some digestive issues. So we try to prep uh, parents, pet parents into being prepared for, you know, there might be some loose stools, there might be some, um, you know, other digestive issues. It's okay. <laughs> you know, like your dog's not, you don't have to rush them to the vet. Um, we try to, we have a whole, our transition box is a 10 day transition period. So um, you slowly introduce the new raw food. M most of the time, 10 days is fine, but some dogs might require a longer transition. Some dogs can like fast for 24 hours and start eating it. So generally 10 days will work. Um, and during that time, some dogs will be fine. Other dogs will have like a, some issues. So it's just really getting people, pet parents to be patient and persistent in the transition process, um, getting them the education they need. I think one of the things we're really working on now is um, having our customers be able to reach out to you know, our raw experts that can get on the phone with them and walk them through because just sending an email or, you know, getting an insert in your box that tells you what to expect isn't always the same. And I think people just want to hear, I mean, I often tell the story, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and been involved in this. My family's been, you know, raw feeding for a long time. Uh, we just rescued a dog last summer and he was two years old. He was eating a kibble that was very low quality and he didn't, want to eat it for the first, you know, five days. He was like, this is not normal. I've never even seen this type of food before. So I had to do all of the tips and tricks that I tell all my customers to do. And I was patient and persistent because I know the process and I'm confident in it. And I know that raw food is the best choice for him and it's going to be better for him. So I stuck with it. But I think when people don't have that confidence, they're very easily um, discouraged and are, tend to give up. So I always tell people to please be patient and persistent. I mean, I even, I have friends, you know, here with lots of my, our friends have dogs and I'll introduce them to the food. And, you know, I have, I had a friend recently who was like, he's not eating it. He won't touch it. I'm like, just please, like, I promise you it will be worth it. And now, you know, it's been like two months and their dog is loving the food and thriving on it. And so um, it's really just getting people, the pet parent to, believe that this is the best thing and that they it's going to be a little bumpy maybe in the beginning but it's all worth it in the end so yeah that's my biggest piece of advice for people that's new to raw. yeah that is great so what would sorry when did you did you want to no i'm just going to say there's a lot of hand holding in the beginning because people really? are totally afraid that they're they're going to make a mistake and we like to say to people it's a recipe not a formula yeah. so it's, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. The, the dog isn't going to um, expire if you have, a, have everything not balanced in the first meal. Yeah, yeah. 
One of the things that we recommend for parents making this, pet parents making this uh, transition is our runs be done. I don't, don't know if you've ever seen that product. I have seen it. That's great. Yeah, that's something we should actually add to our list of, uh, of things we suggest because products like yours are great for, you know, not only enticing dogs, but also helping with some of the digestive issues in the beginning. So yeah, yeah. we tell people, you know, to if you're doing this for the first time, add a little bit of the runs be done and you can hopefully avoid the, uh, and it does work to, to avoid the, the, the very disruptive type of digestive issues that people are unhappy about. I know it is. And it can be tough at first. It's like, you know, even the same thing with my dog that I transitioned last summer, you know, not at first he was like, hesitant to eat it. I got him to eat it. Then he was having, you know, loose stools. And I, the whole time I'm thinking, gosh, this is really hard for people that don't know anything about it or unsure or say you're, you know, in a relationship and you really want to feed the dog raw and like your partner is not wanting to feed raw. And then there's issues in the first week, then you're going to much more easily give it up. So I think that, um, just having, our goal now is like, how do we make this information just super easily accessible, um, get people to start from a place of less fear. Um, but it's, it's hard. It's a hard, it's something that a lot of raw companies deal with. Um, and the less <laughs> dogs that start from kibble, the better. It's obviously an easier tr transition if they're eating just like a home cooked diet or something and you transition to raw. But even then it's still, it still can be a change. And even from raw formula to raw formula can be different, you know? Um, sure. So, um, but yeah, that's my biggest piece of advice, patient and persistence for the pet parents. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, so what would you say, Amy, says we feed raw apart from other raw food companies out there? Yeah. So, I mean, we, there's not too many people doing exactly what we're doing. Um, there's, we, welcome other raw pet food companies. The market is definitely not saturated. The more raw pet food companies out there, the more education, uh, education help we're getting, you know, the, it's really kind of a lot of heavy lifting required of companies like us um, to educate the, the more mainstream consumer. Um, so I would say that, you know, there are a few doing something similar to what we're doing, but I can talk about, you know, what we stand behind as our, you know, most proud qualities and safety is one of them. Um, we do use only, um, you know, USDA human grade meats, all produced in a USDA certified facility. We're the only pet food produced in that facility, very strict um, regulations, um, everything, all of the ingredients uh, go through rigid quality assurance specifications. Um, we also do use a cold pressure process um, to neutralize pathogens in the food. So this is uh, HPP, um, which just puts it places the um, already sealed package in a chamber of cold water, and it uses pressure to neutralize the pathogens. So it's not using chemicals, it's not using heat, it's not using non-natural additives. It's just using water pressure to um, to eliminate potentially harmful pathogens like E. coli, salmonella, listeria. Um, this is something that, well, it's become a little controversial among raw feeders is necessary for raw companies to be doing today because of the FDA's zero tolerance policy on pathogens and pet food. Um, we also offer a very large variety of uh, proteins and recipes. So six, uh, chicken, turkey, lamb, beef, duck, venison, um, and, we, yeah, I mean, it's a very, I think, straightforward recipe. It's, it's, as we talked about, it's muscle meat, organ meat, bone. It's, it's great to feed as is, or, you know, you can feed with other things. Most of, most of our clients love to add other things. So it's really just like, I don't, I mean, we totally support it. We have not, we don't ever, you know, dissuade people from doing that. We, in fact, we encourage people to do it. Um, and convenience. So, I mean, it's really, everything is done for you everything you pick the recipes that you want um it's pre-portioned it's delivered to your doorstep on a regular schedule so you never have to worry about running out um you can change your frequency so like you know if you have a really small freezer you can you know get it in smaller frequencies um so it's really just a, a great simple way to take the guesswork out of feeding raw um yeah. So those are the, the main things uh, that, you know, 
is make us stand out. I think that um, it's it's a tough business. <laughs> so maybe that's why there's not a lot of other people doing what we're doing. We're shipping raw frozen meat around the country. Um, so you can imagine all the things that can go wrong. <laughs> there's lots of, uh, you know, but it, it's also, I, I don't know, I think people are, especially our demographic tends to be, I would say we're much more, um, our customers are the millennial Gen Z demographic. So subscription meal plan uh, services are very familiar to them. I think that sometimes the pet food store experience can be overwhelming and not so easy to navigate. You have like a million different choices and every, every bag is screaming something different at you. Um, so it's, it's really just a nice um, way to get really um, healthy, safe, convenient raw meals to your doorstep um, that you really don't have to do anything else besides thaw and feed. I think people, I always, I'm seeing all these ads now recently where it's, uh, it's so much work to, you know, thaw the food. And I, I'm like <laughs> thinking to myself, I mean, it's, is it hard? Like it's for us, like it's easier to put something in the microwave, right? Like a TV dinner, but how much harder is it on the flip side when you're like, you know, sick and having to treat yourself. So it's a little bit more work than kibble, right? We're, we're not we, we say that too, you know, if you're used to ripping open a bag and pouring it into a bowl, yes, there are a few more steps, but the benefits certainly outweigh the inconvenience. Yeah. Right. We, we love what you're doing. I think it's just great. I absolutely love what you're doing. You know, we, most of our most popular products are base mixes to yeah. which you have to add your own meat. So yeah. what you do, your company is just a terrific, um, terrific add-on to to people who are looking for a convenient way to get the meat, and I think you there's a lot of trust uh, with your product, and it, it's great. It's really great, and I certainly love that it's run by a woman. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we try to be really like you. I get this sense from from your brand as well. It's just like transparency, and just you know, especially there was just a story today that came out about all the you know, they're not listing the brands, but pet foods that have found dog DNA and, you know, all these mysterious ingredients. And, you know, it's, I really think that today's modern pet parent is craving that transparency, wants to know where the food is coming from, wants simple, straightforward, straightforward ingredients that make sense to them. Um, and so products, not to pat ourselves on the back, like say with you guys too, this, these ingredients make sense. Like there's nothing, this is healthy food <laughs> um, that is just designed to promote health. And it's about helping animals thrive and not just survive, right? We always make that distinction. It's, dogs are very adaptive creatures. They can survive on a lot of things. Kibble is proof of that, but is it what's best for them ultimately? No, I mean, there's there's no way feeding only dry processed food every day, <laughs> the same thing for their entire lives can be better than feeding, feeding fresh, whole ingredients. It's really interesting what you say about Thrive. Uh, Dr. Harvey likes to say that dogs could live on garbage. And we know this is true because you see street dogs in many cultures that never get kibble or any food. They're just really surviving on garbage. And they live. Yeah. Are they healthy? Probably not. Yeah. So there, again, we're back to good, better, best, but it really is common sense. Yeah. It's common sense in the same way that we feed ourselves. Yeah. If, you're, if you're going to eat processed uh, food every single day, you're not going to be healthy. And if you eat whole foods and fresh foods, you will be healthier. So yeah. why would that be any different for our animals? Yeah. We often say too, because obviously price is a, an issue that, is a prohibitive for, or, you know, can be, there's a lot of sticker shock with a product like ours, right? Because if you're used to spending a certain amount of money on pet food kibble, um, this is going to cost more because it costs us more to make it <laughs> and source it. You know, it's like, we always say quality costs more. Um, and one of our favorite sayings is like, don't ask why raw is so expensive. Ask why kibble is so cheap. Um, exactly. you know? It's just a really, it's like, it makes sense, but it's, it's a hard thing to get people to change that, uh, to have that shift. Um, I think I, I've said this in the past, but it's just a sort of, in my mind, a reallocation of funds. So, you know, instead of pay, paying all this money, you know, in vet bills or thousands of dollars to have a tumor removed five, five years down the line, you're paying more up front, but you're saving down the line. And we have people tell us all the time, like, I don't really have to go to the vet besides for the, you know, 
regular checkups or, you know, vaccines or whatever you're doing that's just well checks. But, you know, to be going because your dog's constantly suffering from allergies or joint issues and being put on steroids and all, we just, we don't see that happening as much with dogs fed a healthy whole foods diet. Um, even my dog that I keep referencing him, but he came to us with a lot of problems and he had a like he was just getting these ear infections, even just from when we were like, he was detoxing from the kibble and he hasn't had one since he's been on raw. It's like completely, you know, gone. <laughs> so it's just really nice to, to see the, I'm sure you guys see this too. The word of mouth power of, of feeding dogs, you know, a raw diet is, is amazing because you see results so quickly too. First you see smaller, you know, firmer, well-formed stools, then you see, you know, little things start to, their, their fur is shinier and healthier. And then you start to see just like, you know, joint mobi mobility. It's just amazing um, the transformations that we see um, when dogs are switched from a processed, highly processed diet to a minimally processed raw. Diet. Again, common sense. You see, you yeah. see the results because they're they're getting nutrition, and yeah. really in the kibble, they're not getting that. Yes, yeah, and they're also getting a lot of things. Gosh, I, I'm always like, we don't bash kibble, but I feel like this has been a lot of bash. <laughs> but I think it's important to because it's not like you can never feed kibble. And I understand. I mean, I personally don't want to feed kibble, but I, it's okay as long as you are adding the other stuff in. I think it's better than than not doing anything at all. But I think why I talk about kibble, it's just important for people to know what you're feeding so you can make better choices. So, you know, to think that feeding only dry, highly processed kibble for a dog's entire life is going to give them the best chance at a happy, healthy life is just not true. <laughs> I mean, I know dogs can survive and they're, you know, we always have people be like, well, I had a dog that lived until 14 and they only ate, you know, whatever dry food it is. And it's like, but maybe they would have lived longer <laughs> or, you know, maybe they would have lived better. So we also say it's not just about more years, but quality years. Um, we really want to give dogs quality years, a quality life. And that comes from eating healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so true. So true. Um, so Wendy, let's turn, let's turn the table and ask you some questions. Um, tell us how Dr. Harvey was founded and how it all began. So everybody knows this story by now, but uh, Dr. Harvey was a human physician in Manhattan, and but always loved animals. So people were coming to him and saying, you know, I'm having problems with my dog and or bird, because we also do make food for birds, uh, or cat. And he, being a nutritionist and really understanding what nutrition was doing for humans uh, and with his love of animals, started to research what commercial dog food was at that point. And at that time we were seeing this tremendous rise in cancer in dogs, just incredible. Like every other dog was coming, pet parent was coming into him and saying, my dog was just diagnosed with cancer. And we knew that it had to be, there had to be something. Now what we're seeing is a tremendous rise in kidney disease. So we have, uh, probably every third call that we get is a dog that has just been diagnosed with kidney disease. And it used to be dogs that were seven or eight years old. Now we're seeing it in two-year-olds and three-year-olds. And, you know, if you think about it, again, common sense, if you think about what kibble does to the kidneys, it makes sense that these dogs are not getting enough moisture. And so their kidneys start to shut down. It really isn't that there's not a flaw in the canine community where kidneys are just going bad. Clearly, it has to do with what we're feeding them. And it, I'm sure you tell this story as well. I mean, if you gave your child Cheerios three times a day, you know, on the panel, the nutritional panel, it shows vitamins and fiber and protein and everything that's in Cheerios, but it's not sufficient. So again, getting back to thriving, not surviving. Uh, so he began to talk about making food for people and he came up with a recipe and he used to put that recipe on a piece of paper and give it to people and tell them to go home and cook for their dogs. And it was cut up vegetables and add fresh meat and add herbs and uh, various herbs that he also gave to humans. And then he started lecturing with that recipe, but it was hard. 
it was difficult. And I was making that at the time we had two Akitas and I was cooking for the Akitas and cutting up my vegetables and adding the meat and it would take me a whole day. And then I had my first human child and I looked at him and I said, I can't do both. I can't make baby food and also dog food. So we started to look at ways that we could make it simpler, just like you do, trying to make it easier for people to feed this way. Because we understand that convenience is a huge factor, particularly in the lives of people today. Everybody's busy, everybody's running. And, uh, you know, how are you going to add this to your already very busy life? So we started to find out about dehydrated and freeze-dried vegetables, and we began putting those together to make it easier for people. And that's how we came up with our base mix, which still to this day is our most popular product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we continue to educate ourselves over various things, and we came up with Paradigm, which we use for dogs that need a low-carb keto diet. Uh, We use that for dogs with diabetes. Uh, We use it for dogs that have seizures. And again, still adding the fresh meat. That's so key to what we do. Mm -hmm. Then you add omega, you add the oils, and we do recommend rotating those oils. And you come up with a complete and and, uh, really healthy diet for animals. And just as you said, we start to see these dogs who had been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and they come back a month or two later, and their kidney levels, the the numbers go down. Mm -hmm. And they do better. They start eating again. Yeah. Um, Meta sees it all the time, and she actually has a, an older dog, a senior dog, who was diagnosed with, ki- with kidney disease and now is on our kidney protocol and really thriving at, at 15, right? He's 15? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. 15. <laughs> the yeah. Activist, when he looked at the blood work, said this is the, the blood work of a three-year-old dog. I've wow. never seen anything like amazing. it. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing. And we hear it all the time. It's not just us seeing it with our own pets. It's you know, hearing the customers reaching out to us and saying that, as I'm sure you hear in, you know, in, in your customer service department as well, it's, that's yeah. what makes it so rewarding. I know it's really, it is really deeply rewarding. Um, it's almost, you know, addictive to be in this business. Cause I mean, especially when you love animals so much, it's, yeah. it just feels so, uh, we get invested in, in everyone and like, you know, feel a connection and, it really, everyone that works here, I'm sure you guys are the same at Dr. Harvey's, everyone that works at Weefy Raw is like huge dog lover, animal lover. Like we all are crazy about animals. We all, everyone here, and I always say this to our customers too, um, we all feed, uh, we feed raw, obviously, and everyone in our families and friends feeds, we feed raw too. So we have this like awesome sort of like focus group of people that we can always tap into and, um, you know, it's, it's really awesome. And we're all, um, just such believers and it's, it's great to work for a company, um, that has such an awesome product, you know, um, it's just, it's really, it's fun. It's fun to have something that you truly believe in and be promoting it. And it's rewarding. It's incredibly rewarding. I mean, that's why I keep going, you know, over 30 years doing it. And there's not a week that goes by that we don't hear a story that makes us all weep. And we're just so happy to be able to do what we do because as you know, running a business is not easy. It's very challenging. And I just feel grateful that we do all that hard work, but we're actually helping animals every day and their, and their pet parents, you know, yeah, it's a lovely thing to be able to do. Yeah. And I love that you use the word addictive because I (laughs) really could figure out a good word for why I love working here so much, but I think it really does become almost an addiction. I've never had a job where you just can't wait to go in and see the emails that are coming in and help it help somebody else that's calling in. So I love that word. I'm totally going to use that. It's like, it's a dopamine hit every time you get like (laughs) transformation story and alcohol or drugs necessary. (laughs) No. <laughs> yeah. well, you absolutely have to be a dog lover to work at Dr. Harvey's. There's no, uh, no, if it, it, we put that in the, in the uh, advertisement, when we're looking for, for people must love dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't Luckily. be here and not, uh, and not feel that community. And we have a community within the company, but the much larger Dr. Harvey family of the people that have used our foods and our supplements and seen the, difference in their animals. And it's, it is, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful business to be involved in. But do you guys see, um, 
what are you seeing from your end as, as far as any, I mean, I know you talked about earlier about, you know, the growth uh, in the holistic uh, vet world and people just being more open to this, what help feeding healthier, but are there any other things that are trends that you're noticing, um, you know, recently or in the last few years that stand out to you? I think, as you said, that people uh, are, as they become more aware of their own health and what makes them feel better, they start to think, well, wow, if I'm doing better and I'm going to the gym every day and I'm eating whole foods, maybe I should be doing that with my dog. So wow. there, there definitely has been more acceptance. I think social media has helped a lot mm -hmm. in getting the word out because it's the, uh, it's word of mouth amplified by millions. So yeah. um, I think that's a great way to get, to get in touch with people. Unfortunately for us, people come to us primarily when they're having a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's still probably, um, I would say not, it used to be more so with us, but it's still to get people, you're right. It's like a lot of people, probably more than, you know, the average pet product uh, comes to a company, companies like ours when they're desperate and their vets have nothing else to do. like, we can't help you anymore. Right. Um, and then they're open, more open-minded and they're a little bit more fearless because they're already, you know, their worst fear is coming true. Like their dog's really sick or, you know, their, their dog has only has so long to live. So, um, they're a lot more receptive to the, uh, uh, products like this working, um, but yeah. I yeah. I mean, we, we call ourselves a solutions company because they come to us when they're looking for a solution, whether their dog is itching and has rashes and they've been on steroids and they've been to the vet 10 times and their dog is still itching. Yeah. Um, the, the simpler things um, or whether we're looking at something very serious like pancreatitis or, or mm -hmm. cancer or kidney disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to be the company that, that helps with the solution. Yeah. We would love for people to come to us when their dog is young and healthy. Um, and, and that does happen. It usually happens when they've lost a dog mm -hmm. um, right. to one of these awful diseases. And they say, when I get a new dog, yeah. I'm going to start with Dr. Harvey's from day one. Yeah. So we've, we've been around long enough to see the generations of people who've been feeding. We have breeders who've been feeding four or five generations of their, of their dogs uh, on Dr. Harvey's and, okay breed and have the healthiest puppies because of it. Yeah, that's great. That's And it's interesting what you said about social media, because I think one of the comments we get a lot is, oh, well, this, you know, raw feeding is just a fad or a trend. I mean, you're, you know, we're very active on social media. We're, we're a direct to consumer business. Our, we have, we rely heavily on our social presence. Um, but like, it's just so funny to me because it's not, this is the, the oldest diet for dogs, right? I mean, I would say if anything's a trend or a fad, it's, it's kibble, right? It's right. been around right. forever. Um, this is the original, uh, you know, most biologically appropriate nature designed diet. Um, but I think the awareness of it is now more uh, out there. So people feel like it just all of a sudden pops out of nowhere and everyone's just, you know, feeding this fad diet. So. Yeah, it's definitely not not trendy. But, I, you know, kibble, listen, I think kibble is one of the, the best marketed products in the history of man. Uh, they came up with an idea. We can do this really cheaply. We can tell people that this is the only way to feed your dog, that your dog is going to get everything it needs in this little tiny cookie. And that's all you ever have to feed your dog and your dog will be healthy. Uh, and that was marketed and it caught on. And you know, to this day, people believe it. And unfortunately, that's still what the vets are teaching us. So yeah. we have a joke about high quality kibble. There is no such thing as high quality kibble. Kibble is mm -hmm. kibble. Mm -hmm. um, fresh food is fresh food. And uh, it's fine if you want to give your dog some kibble, as we said earlier, but add some fresh meals, give them some fresh food. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we just respect what you're doing. And we know it's very difficult. We've been doing it for a very long time. <laughs> but it's worth the fight. Yeah, it is absolutely worth the fight. And especially when you start to see, you know, the shift is somewhat palpable. It's, it's really rewarding. You're like, whoa, this is actually working. You know, this is like, people are actually starting to truly understand. So, um, but yeah, it's still, still a lot of work to be done, um, which is why we can't stop doing what we're doing, but um, it's, it's definitely um, changing 
uh, every day it's changing. So, yeah. Yeah. Keep up the good fight. I, and as you said, the more people that are talking about it, you know, when we started out, we were really the only ones. There was yeah. a couple of other companies that were talking about natural foods in the 80s, but not really very many. And the truth is that everyone has lifted us up. You know, the more people that are talking about fresh and, and good ingredients and reading labels, right. you know, that's great for us. And it has been great. It has really uh, been instrumental in our growth, which continues to be very, very strong, which is wonderful. Yeah. It's so true. It's such a good point. I think uh, companies like yours help companies like ours and our, and, and vice versa, it's sort of the symbiotic relationship, right? Like we're absolutely we're putting, um, we're educating people about the benefits of a healthy diet and therefore, you know, you're, oh, okay. Like I, I'm going to feed raw, but what else can I add to it? Oh, there's Dr. Harvey's over here. You know, it's, it's really, um, it's all uh, connected and it's just getting people in a, into a different mindset and out of, thinking outside the kibble bag. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, Wendy, can you tell us which of Dr. Harvey's supplements could be used with the We Feed Raw blends, and can multiple uh, supplements be used together? Great question. So any one of our supplements, they're, they're pure herbal supplements, so they go really well with any of Amy's uh, diets, I think they can be used together. We have supplements for older dogs that uh, that could be added just to enhance what you're already feeding, which is a great diet and complete. Uh, and they can be used together or separately or every other day as they're herbs. They're really food. So it's additional, uh, very high quality superfood that you're giving uh, giving your dog along with a great diet. So any one of our supplements, the, the formative years for the, for the puppies and the, uh, the, the golden years for the seniors, uh, certainly if you have a dog with kidney issues, adding our kidney supplement is, is a great, uh, great enhancement. Um, you know, our oils, I think, can be added to, to raw food. And we, we like rotating. We like people to do different things. I think dogs like and need that type of variety. So absolutely. And then, as I said earlier, I think Runs Be Done is a great supplement, which is a combination of pumpkin and other great things for digestion that can be used in the transition period that really could help with dogs that are trying to get onto a raw diet. Yeah, that's great. And now I'm definitely going to add that to our um, list of suggestions. We already suggest just plain canned organic pumpkin, but this sounds like it's a more targeted um, product that would be, so that's, that's great. It is. And it, it's really a great, I'm a very, very proud of that formula. And I, Meta could tell you, people call all the time and say, this has yeah. just been a miracle for, yeah. for my dogs. I mean, we, we see, I mean, I would say the, the difficult diseases that I mentioned earlier, are one of the things, but one of the other problems that we see are dogs that have constant diarrhea. And we've seen dogs switch to our diet, and I'm sure they would do just as well on yours, uh, nine years of constant diarrhea, and three days later, they have forum stool. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And one of the things, of course, that we recommend when we see that is, is runs be done. Mm-hmm. It's a great name, by the way. Good copy. <laughs> I'm a copywriter, so I appreciate good copy when I see it. <laughs> I have to say that when we came up with the formula and we were looking for a name, I remember it very clearly. And, and somebody said, one of the three of us said, runs yeah. be done. And I think we all had a tremendous giggle fit over it. And then we said, okay, <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. It's, great. it's really great. Yeah. So why don't you tell us about our new supplemental chews that we literally just launched at the beginning of this month that we're yeah. very excited about as well. Yeah, and they're fun to use along with any diet. Uh, They're nutritional chews. Uh, They can be used as treats. I have a Doberman Pinscher who has been knocking them off the counter because he can't wait to get into them. So one is for immune, uh, immune, which also includes allergy, and that's a mushroom formula, but there are other things in it like quercetin that we think are really, really helpful for allergies and really just helpful to keep the dog's immunity uh, height, heightened, um, and they work as treats, so it's fun. Um, there's the hip and joint supplement that uh, has a lot of great things to keep keep dogs healthy as they age. And then we have the probiotic, which is a pro and prebiotic that can be added 
um, to really any diet and uh, they've been doing well. The dogs love them, which is exciting. And, you know, you could just throw them in. So they're actually very, very easy to use. That's great. That's awesome. And you guys just introduced these. They're now just available this month. Yeah, they just started. Yeah, they're brand new, actually. Okay. I see them in the back. Congratulations. Yes. That's the container. This is the immune. <laughs> and they're, <laughs> they're probably not open. I already show you one. They're, they're actually shaped like little hearts. So cute. Yeah, they're little hearts. Oh, they're shaped like hearts. That's cute. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. been using your chicken, dehydrated uh, chicken heart for treats for my... Um, those are those are, yeah. those are the best. Those are definitely... Um, doggy crack yeah. <laughs> so i don't know if you can see this but that's the little the little oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That's and they're great. fun the trainers have been loving them for using using them for treats and um we are also a member of the nasc so these are all certified by the nasc we worked almost two years on developing these so we're very proud of it that's awesome wow congratulations thanks <laughs> We always Hopefully have something in the works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you, can you guys talk about anything else you're doing? Uh, any we're, we're working on some new uh, complete foods. Mm -hmm. uh, this line will be extended. The chew line will be extended in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually going to do a kidney chew. I've never said that before. So this is, you're, <laughs> you're hearing it first. Yeah. Um, so our kidney supplement is actually very, very uh, successful. And to put it into a chew to make it easier for, for pet parents is, that's our next goal. And uh, probably a multi that we'll do in the chew form. Yeah. yeah. That's they're great. just convenient and, and fun and they're delicious. The dogs love them. So uh, we, we actually don't have a palatability, palatability issue with our powders. Mm -hmm. Dogs don't usually have a problem eating them if you mix them in. And certainly mixing them in with, with raw has, is what people do. And, yeah. um, very successfully, but yeah. the treats are fun. Yeah. We, I actually have been using your, um, what's the one that, I, I mean, not regularly because we already add the bone to our food. So I don't want to have too much. I don't want to get my dog constipated, but, uh, the, the, the base mix that you're the raw vibrance. Yeah. The lot, raw, yeah. And he loves the taste of that though. He's really yeah. loves it. Well, yeah. we love it. And we have a lot of our customers who use, uh, we feed raw with our raw yeah. vibrance and I'm going to, I wouldn't be too concerned about the yeah. amount of bone. There's not just yeah. not enough in there to, to I don't it. think to, to be an issue. Yeah. I, and I haven't noticed that at all, even when I've fed it uh, and pretty healthy amount too, to his meals, he hasn't had any constipation, but I didn't know for like prolonged period, but it's great. And he loves the flavor and it smells really good. And you can like see, I mean, it just, you can just tell that it's a good quality product. It's, it's really great. We're very, very picky, just like you are about what we put <laughs> into every product. The ingredients are, we're, we're very, the French have a word it's, it, that I love. We don't really have an equivalent in English, exigeant, which means demanding. <laughs> um, that's, that's what we are. We're very demanding about every single ingredient that goes into our food. And if something, we can't get what we want, we stop making the product. Yeah. We won't substitute an inferior ingredient just to get it out. Yeah. We used to off, actually offer a lot more, um, I, I always say we were like trying to be everything to everyone, but it was like, we had like 10 or 11 different recipes. We had, we used to do bones on the side or bone in. So you could like get the raw meaty bones on the side and just to me, it was just, it was so much work. And we were like Focus. measuring everything out. Focus. Yeah, exactly. They focused. Yes. Yeah. And of course, like when we narrowed down to six, which is still a, a, quite a lot, um, you know, the people that were used to the 10 or 11 were like, ah, but it just what happened too is like what you were saying with the sourcing is like if we couldn't, as we grew, we needed to be able to still trust the suppliers. And like Rabbit, for example, was just really hard. There wasn't a, a big enough Rabbit supplier in the US and we, we didn't want to um, order overseas. Um, the only, right now, all of our um, meats are sourced from farms we trust in the US, but we do source our lamb and venison from New Zealand, which is all uh, mm. pasture raised, grass fed. You know, New Zealand is a great country for- Yeah, they are. <laughs> so- That's great, um, that's great. Yeah. yeah, sourcing is definitely a, a big part of it. It's a big, big issue and how did you fare during the pandemic? Was it difficult? It was actually a boon to our business, but still a really tough time because we were relying heavily on shipping 
So it's like, you know, FedEx and UPS are like, please, like praying to the FedEx and UPS gods <laughs> every week. Um, so we got a lot more business, but it was sometimes hard. I mean, we had a lot of uh, tricky weeks with, with deliveries. Um, but I think overall, if I had to say like net, net, it was probably uh, overall better, good for our business. Did oh, you guys find same. I mean, it was also like people were more and more pet ownership, right? Like everyone was getting pets. So. Absolutely. And probably spending a little time at home reading about what they should be feeding that new pet. Yeah. Uh, we actually, so we manufacture everything here um, mm -hmm. in our own facility. And the biggest challenge was to keep, to stay open. So we did stay open. We never shut wow. uh, our doors and we never stopped shipping. Yeah. So uh, we were starting to be take precautions very very early on mm -hmm. and uh we actually kept our staff very healthy during the pandemic which is yeah. i'm very proud of that that we we had yeah. very little um downtime uh with any any individual you know we were yeah. able to stay open um, the entire time and of course people panicked in the beginning because they were afraid they weren't going to get their food yeah. And uh, we tried to assure everybody, you know, the hardest thing was just making sure that we had sourced everything and that everything was here and the ingredients were available. And uh, as you said, the shipping was became an issue. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't think we we fared very well. We we worked very hard during the pandemic, but we yeah. all we got through it. It was a hard time. I just think it's hard to look back on it and say like, oh, it was great for the business because it was just such a hard time in the world. It was a hard, just a hard time to be a human being. <laughs> um, you know, everything was so unknown. We, you didn't know what was going to happen from one day to the next. Yeah. Um, so having a business uh, is obviously just an added stress on top of that. Um, yeah. So, but we also made it through. We, we, um, we used to do our own, we used to have our own manufacturing facility in Maine. Um, and it just became like too, we, we, we found a co-man that we really, really trust and is great. And again, we're the only pet food made there. Um, but it was just became, you know, there's a lot of regulations with raw pet food. We wanted to make sure that everything was like completely buttoned up. And so that was a really good move for us. Um, so we, sh everything is manufactured in the Midwest and Illinois. Um, and then our, we have um, fulfillment centers um, in New Jersey actually, and California. Um, and we're about to open another one in Texas. So Great. everything, the goal is to get everything to people uh, with one and two day transit. So when you're shipping raw frozen, you can imagine the, um, you know, need to get the food there quickly. We ship it all in all the dry ice and frozen. But, you know, when you get into the summer months, it starts to get a little bit <laughs> scary if you don't get it there um, in that, that sh short window of time. So. I'm having heart palpitations thinking about <laughs> shipping raw meat. All, all of the meat that we use is freeze dried. So yeah. um, none of those issues, fortunately, yeah. uh, even with, well, with any meat product, you're going to have some issues, yeah. but I, I don't, I don't envy that part of it. I think what you're doing is just great and very brave. Yeah. Getting to the uh, multiple uh, distribution centers has been key. Uh, because it's really been, uh, we haven't really had many issues at all. I mean, once in a while, you'll have like the box here or there that just gets lost and doesn't make it. But overall, we really have like a great uh, success rate with getting the boxes there on time and completely frozen. Um, people really can't believe it. They're like, this is, where did this come from? Like, how is it stuck? You know, I'm all the way over here and you're over there. Like, how did it get here so frozen? So we, we pat, we've spent a lot of time fine tuning the science of the boxes and making sure that everything is frozen when it gets to our customers. So. Fabulous. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. And you were very generous to send a box to Alexis and she shared yeah. it with all of us and okay. um, we, we got to try everything and uh, it's great. It's really, really great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So thank you for that too. And thank you for your time. Thank you for joining thank us. You. It was really nice to meet you guys. Wendy, I'm really, I'm such a big fan and I really appreciate uh, you doing this with me and um really hope we can continue the friendship because it's absolutely, really absolutely likewise this is really a treat and i hope we'll meet in person yeah. uh, at, at some event or another at some point i would love yeah. that i would love that but thank you for what you do um it's it's really it's great your company's great and we're very very proud to be associated with you well likewise thank you, thank you. we'll talk soon <laughs> <laughs>